Okay, Jacob, so we did, I'm recording it now, so we'll be able to watch this back later. But let's go ahead and continue with this concept here of, of us talking about trading plans. So you said, you know, you, you've handled the emotions well, you, you've learned kind of the trader psychology, and you're, you've realized that it's not super important to get rich quickly, right? So that's, that's a good starting point. I think that once we get into things, when we get into kind of um, writing out a trading plan, Again, it's going to be like setting up your business, right? You want to have some sort of plan in place so that you know what to do when things go right or wrong. Does that make sense? Yes. Awesome. Um, so again, we've got a chart pulled up. You can see my screen. Uh, and I do want to get into really quick before we go further, but because we, in order for us to make a trading plan, there's another question that we have to answer that is super, super important. And that is we have to kind of determine what kind of trader you are or what kind of trader you would like to be. So if you would, tell me a little bit about your experience. Like what what do you like to trade? Um, for example, do you like to trade breakouts, reversals, you know, trend line breaks, trend line continuations? What sort of stuff do you find you actually feel the most comfortable with? Uh, if I can find a trend, a trend, uh, trend line, and then breakouts and trend. I mean, basically, uh, uh, yeah, trend lines and breakout and reverse. It's like reversals are not very, very common, right? Mm -hmm. So, kind of uh, trend, trend, trend continuation. Lines, yeah, trend continuation. Gotcha. Awesome. So you're really, if, to put it into, would you say that you're more of a breakout continuation trader or are you more, would you like to be a pullback trader? Kind of which, which makes you feel more comfortable? What's the difference between a pullback and a, a continuation, breakout continuation? I don't know the difference between the two. Sure. Uh, so are you, you're, you can see my screen, right? Yes, I can see yes. Oh. Okay. No perfect. more. You can't see it. Not now. Okay. Yeah, I can see now. Okay. Um. So. So the can the difference is very simply, right? Uh. Here is kind of a trend, right? We're looking at a trend. I'm just drawing an example for now. So a breakout trader is going to well, actually, let's say first, a pullback trader is going to be looking to get involved right around here, right? Buying into an uptrend. Right, the overall market is making a movement to the upside. A pullback trader is going to look to buy right around this area here. Does that make sense? So a pullback is that different from my scalping. I'm sorry, what'd you say? Is that different from scalping? Uh, well, scalping is just trading the lower time frames, right? Uh, pullback trading or trend following can be on any time frame. Does that make sense? Okay. So, so when we're looking at pullback trading, uh, we're just simply, no matter what the time frame is, we could be looking at the 15 minute chart. We could be looking at the four hour chart. Pullback trading is simply looking to get involved with the overall market direction, right? So we have an uptrend. A pullback trader is going to look to get involved right around a pullback or a kind of uh, the market makes a movement to the upside and then it pulls back and the pullback trader is looking to get in or buy into this market when that market pulls back. Does that make sense? It does. Okay. So with that in mind, as a pullback trader, you'll be looking to see a market that's overall making a movement to the upside and when it starts to correct. This gives us a chance to get in at a discount or a, a lower price, right? So if the market is moving up and then it comes back, that's where we can get involved and give ourselves a good chance of seeing a continuation to the upside and making money by getting involved on that pullback. So that's what a pullback trader is. But then to also clarify, uh, a breakout trader is going to look at something like this, right? Do you see this level right here? You see the, the level that I have identified right here in red? This is kind of a recent structure high, right? So we found a level of resistance right here, okay? What a breakout trader is going to look to do is when that price level gets broken, right? When that level of resistance gets broken, we're going to be looking to join in as a buyer on the break, right? So take a look at this. 
when price breaked uh, when price broke higher than that level of resistance look what happens we saw a continuation upwards do you see that yes so as a breakout trader that's what we're looking to do and you can see again here's that same concept here's a level of resistance right and then buyers break through that level right here and then a continuation upwards so that's what a pullback trader is as well as a breakout trader those are two very popular ways or concepts that you can use to trade the trend um, do you have a preference over either one or do you care to trade both which one feels a little bit more comfortable to you i can trade both but Uh, yeah, the, the continuation, the continuation is a, is that the, 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 the breakout, right? Or mm -hmm. the uh, one in blue is what? The one in blue. The, the one down here, the, the black circles, that's more the pullback. And the blue is the breakout or continuation trade. I prefer the continuation trade. Okay, awesome. So that, that gives us something to work with. Uh, because what that allows us to do is identify that you want to, uh, you're a little bit more on the kind of, not necessarily aggressive, but you want to get involved with a new market movement. Is that right? You want to kind of ride the next move in the market? Does that kind of make sense? Yeah, it does. Okay, awesome. So that gives us kind of something to work with here going forward. Looking at pullbacks is one way to do it, but breakouts is just as effective if you know what you're doing. So that gives us something to work with. Um, and what we can actually do now is we can take a look at some chart examples just to get us started. Just so that first of all, before we get into kind of the concept of, um, you know, writing out the trading plan, something as simple as understanding breakouts is something we need to know first before we get into the trading plan we kind of need to understand the concept of breakouts so if we're going to be talking about breakouts what i'm going to start us out doing is we need to identify um we need to identify what exactly a breakout or a time to trade breakouts is because i do want to say that something like this right let me get my sketchpad again we don't want to be trading breakouts in a market environment like this. Do you see the do you see the drawing I made right there? Mm -hmm. Right. So so with this, let's say that this is our level of resistance. And down below is our level of support. So we have buyers down here and we have sellers down here. But as breakout traders, Remember, we're looking to join a big move as it gets going, right? And a market that's going sideways, it's not giving us much of a continuation opportunity. Do you see that? Yeah, so it's going back and it's forth, right? Anytime we tried to trade breakouts here, it would have reversed on us. And that would have been bad, right? Because we would have lost money because the market did not continue. So when we're looking to be breakout traders, when we're looking to trade the continuation of a market, we want to first identify something about a market that shows us that we might see some sort of continuation. So a market like this, I'll make this red. This is no good. This is a sideways choppy market without any sort of decision about which way it goes. So with that said, what kind of market do we actually want to trade? Well, we want to, as breakout traders, we want to look for a market that's doing something like this. Trending, right? Something that's trending to the up or downside. Does that make sense? It does. Because if we're going to look to trade the breakout of something, wouldn't it make more sense for us to see some direction, some momentum pushing in our favor so that we have a better chance of getting a profitable entry? I mean, so as breakout traders, we want to get involved around the break of a structure point like right here, right? And then we want to ride the long position from there. We don't want to be shorting. We don't want to be fighting the trend. We want to join the trend at a continuation level. Does that make sense? 
Okay, so good. So now we understand that we don't want to be trading sideways markets. We want to be trading markets in momentum. We want to be trading a market that has a sense of direction. So now what we can do is we can actually kind of clear the screen here. And let's talk about what we see here on the chart right now. We're looking at GBP New Zealand on the 15 minute chart. Now, what's cool about this is that looking at the 15 minute chart, this gives us a chance to kind of take a look at a market that did start to get some momentum right here. Do you see kind of how this market really started to get going right around these green candles there? Yes. So just like we talked about in our example, right? Taking a look at those, uh, the drawings that we talked about, what you can see here is that we actually see something pretty similar in this particular market. Okay, and so what you can see here is here is our level of resistance. Do you see this level here that I just drew the red line there? Yes. And you see how the price there came up to this area, right? So we had momentum and take a look. We had a sell off right there. Price stopped and it turned around in this particular area. This tells us mm -hmm. that this level here is a level of resistance. It tells us that there's a good chance here that sellers were strong enough to push price down. And so as breakout traders, we don't want to be buying, we don't want to be buying the pullback. Although that would have been a great trade, we're not looking for that. We're looking for this level to break out through the highs. And so looking at this particular level, if this trade gets going, if it breaks through this level, right? If we break through that level, we might see a continuation of the trend. In fact, that's exactly what we saw, but how could we have identified that? So we talked about just in our example, right? When we looked at this trend, that this level here was a significant structure. You can see that that same concept is here on the actual chart. Do you see that? Okay, cool. So here is our level where price starts to break. One way that you can do it, there are multiple ways to trade breakouts, but one simple way is to wait for a candle to properly break out of that structure, right? See this candle right here, can you see that? Yes. See how it broke through this level here? And look, see how this wick was not able to close above that level of resistance? Do you see that? Yes. Well, things have changed over here. Because over here, price was able to break through that structure and close above that significant level of resistance. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yes, it does. Awesome. Okay. So we're broken through that level. And what does that tell us about this level? Do you have any ideas of like what that might, why would that tell us that we might see further upside? Because that uh, there's more bias in the market now. Absolutely. Broken. Yes, that, that's, the, that's the best way to put it. There are more buyers in this area now than there are sellers. And so what we saw here is a continuation of that setup to the long side, which is awesome, right? So we see that price broke through that level of what was resistance and there was excess buyers to continue pushing price higher, right? So a beautiful little trade there. And uh, that would have been a great little technical example. But now that we have the entry, there's more to it than that, right? We have to understand where do we get in? Also, where do we get out? Does that make sense? Yeah. So we know that this might be a good technical entry for us. It meets our criteria. Let's say that we're looking at GBP New Zealand and we like this particular, uh, this currency pair because it has a lot of momentum, which generally GBP New Zealand does. So we see that this market is kind of breaking through that structure and we may see a continuation from there because there are a lot of now buyers in this area. We'll put B for buyers. So this tells us that there's a good chance that we see continuation. However, it doesn't guarantee that. You mentioned earlier in our call here, which was a really smart observation by you. You said that it's important that we recognize that we're not going to win every single trade. There's no such thing as a 100% win rate, right? Mm hmm so now that we know that we are going to be potentially getting long on this break, we need to understand as breakout traders, especially, how are we going to manage this trade profitably? How are we going to make a movement uh, here that's going to give us a good chance of probability of success? But how are we going to deal with things when they go wrong, right? So we want to know how are we going to deal with things when they go right and wrong. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, so let's clean this up just a little bit here. 
Okay, and so what you can see uh, is we still have that continue. We have that big break of momentum. Let's say that going off of this kind of closed bar above, that we would have gotten entered into a long position, right here. So you see how uh, the the candle right here broke above and closed above that level of resistance, and now on the very next bar, we'll make it we'll make it black. This is where we could potentially get long. Do you see that? Yes. Okay, good. So this is where we would be potentially getting long. So this is where we buy. So there's our buy setup right here. Now, where would we put a stop loss on this particular case? Well, one way that you can do it, and one way that I personally like to do it, of course, at the end of the day, what you'll have to do with this concept is when you do start to trade it yourself or you look to learn about this yourself, you'll need to back test. If, if, well, maybe we'll talk about that in another call. We'll talk about back testing, uh, which is really, really important. And you'll also be able to fit this strategy specifically to you, which is very, very important. But again, we have our buy set up here, right? How do we manage the trade from a winning and losing perspective? We want to be open-minded to the markets. If things don't work out, if this market decides to go down, we want to get out of the trade, right? Uh, because we want yeah. to see the continuation of this market. Otherwise, we don't want to be in the trade. As breakout traders, we're looking for the market to continue f like quickly, right? We want to see that momentum continue. Otherwise, we don't want to be in the trade. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Right. So as breakout traders, we want to see that continuation or we want to get out of the trade. So we need to be open minded to both. So if the price comes down, if it starts to make a movement to the downside, one way that I like to trade this is to get out somewhere underneath the significant structure that we had talked about. Remember how we talked about this level here, how it was a recent level of resistance? Yes. If price starts to break back through that level, there's a good chance that this breakout may fail. And if that is the case, then if price starts to come down to our stop loss, we're just going to cut the trade because we don't want to be in a losing trade. We're looking for momentum to continue. And if it does not continue, we don't want to be involved in the trade anymore. Um, so with that said, if price does go in our favor, this is where things get kind of interesting, right? Because you have a couple options here. Um, what first I'm going to show you is just an example of a take profit, right? So we have a stop loss here. This is where we'd get out of the trade if it goes against us. But if price goes in our favor, as we see in this example, what we want to do most likely is we want to put some sort of take profit that's bigger than our stop loss distance. That's what you know, I personally do, and you might want to do as well, right? So here's our stop loss. And let's say that we go for a two to one risk to reward. Are you familiar with what risk to reward means? Yeah. Okay, good. So we have this concept of here's our risk, right? Let's say that if price goes down, if price goes down, We're going to lose ten dollars you see that if price comes down to our stop loss yep. let's say that we lose ten dollars does that make sense okay good and if price goes up to this region here our take profit we want to see something like this twenty why is that because we're using a two to one reward to risk. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Good. So we're looking to get involved and to win bigger than we stand to lose. So even if this trade goes against us, even if it goes against us and we get stopped out, right? We're just going to lose $10 and mm -hmm. we're going to say, okay, that's fine. Let's get out of the trade and let's go ahead and kind of uh, go, go on to the next trade, right? We want to just get out of the trade quickly if it doesn't go in our favor, because that's what we're looking to do as a breakout trader. We're looking to see the market continue in our direction. Otherwise, we don't want to be in the trade anymore. So with that said, we have $20 of reward and we have $10 of risk. So if price goes in our favor, we stand to gain more than we stand to lose. So that's kind of the first 
principle or concept with a breakout trade. We've talked about the entry. We've talked about kind of, uh, you know, how we could manage the trade, how we could put a stop loss on this as well as put a take profit on that. Do you have any questions so far on what we've looked at? Uh, two things about uh, stop loss. Yes. Uh, if the stop loss is a set, I mean, I know this is just a hypothetical, but if the stop loss is set uh, too close, uh, I've seen situation where, I mean, the trade just reverses and take off the, 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 the stop loss. And then maybe, maybe about uh, three, four pips down, then it reverses again and uh, shoot up. So, so, so why is, uh, why is the criteria from choosing the, the stop loss? So that's, that a like, good, uh, that's a very good question. So that's one. then the second, let me ask the two questions. So you ask them together. The other, the other one is, uh, I have seen uh, on YouTube, I've watched a lot of videos, some traders saying that uh, they don't believe in setting a, a stop loss. And that's one of the areas where I really, really get hurt. I have seen trades that I didn't put a stop loss and really, really went uh, way 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 against me before i i decided that it's enough is enough and when i decided enough is enough i've lost a lot of money so should we always set a stop loss or what do you think so those two questions so jacob that's a really really good question that's actually probably one of the most uh in important concepts to talk about here in our session um, is the stop loss right so it's great when a trade when it goes into profit and we make money that's great but what do we do when price doesn't go with us? Do we put a tight stop loss? Do we put no stop loss? That is a really, really great question, Jacob. So what I want to talk about with you is that, first of all, you'll, when you go onto YouTube, you'll have people who say all sorts of things, right? They'll say you should use a stop loss. They'll say you should not use a stop loss. The thing for me that I find important is to judge it for yourself. Right? You need to back test. You need to see particularly to your strategy what works and what does not work. Now, if you put no stop loss, you have to be extremely careful right? because you don't want to let a loser get crazy because take a look at what we're looking at. Let's say that you buy into this and you don't put a stop loss and price does something like this. Well, now your take profit is just a small amount and your risk is huge. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. So your options here are if you're going to not use a stop loss, if you decide that you don't like using a stop loss, that's fine. But you need to have some sort of other plan in place so that you don't kind of lose a massive amount of money uh, on your trade. So when we do get into building a trading plan together, we can talk about this a little bit more in detail, but for the basis of the general kind of basics of a breakout trade, my personal opinion, now there are strategies that I use that I do not use a stop loss, but for breakout trading, I prefer using a stop loss. And let me tell you why. Remember how we talked about that this level right here, we wanna see that continuation very quickly? Mm -hmm. If we do not see that continuation very quickly, if we do not see the momentum continue up towards our take profit, if price starts to reverse, the trade is no longer as valid. Does that make sense? And if the trade is no longer valid, right? If the trade is no longer uh, as good as we had hoped for initially, then we probably don't wanna be in the trade anymore because we're looking for that market to continue. And if it does not continue, it's not a valid or, a, you know, it was not a successful setup. Now, what this means is that you might have times where it goes like this, right? You might have times where it goes down and hits your stop loss and then goes like this, right? You might have that scenario happen to you. And that's not going to be fun. But sometimes as a breakout trader, remember, we talked about right at the beginning of our call that it's important to understand that you're not going to win them all. Well, sometimes not winning them all means that you're going to get whipped out of a trade and it will go into profit. And this is where understanding that you're not going to win them all and managing your emotions is so, so important. Does that make sense? Yes. Because we can't sit there as traders and kind of been like, oh, well, if I had just held it longer, I would have made money. Because then, although it might happen like this every once in a while, someday if you choose not to 
get out of the trade properly as your plan had mentioned, you'll see something like this. And then you'll be in big trouble, right? Uh. Because it would have been nice if it continued, but it's not always going to do that. The market doesn't do anything. There's no sorts of guarantees of what the market will do next. So as traders, if we don't see that continuation of this market, if we don't see that that buy trade starts to immediately go in our favor, as we had calculated with our technical analysis, then we want to probably scrap the trade. At least that's how I like to trade breakouts. I like to see it either go into profit quickly or I want to get out of the trade. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. So for me, a stop loss on a breakout trade is pretty important. Now, there are other times where I don't use a stop loss, and maybe we can talk about that in another session. Um, but for a breakout trading perspective, I find it very, very important to use a stop loss. Um, do you have any more questions about the stop loss? Uh, what would be your your suggestion? I, I know, as part of what I know, I know Whatever you say, I'm I'm not holding you to read. It's just a just a suggestion. What would be a suggestion of a, of a reasonable stop loss? Good question as well. So uh, yeah, absolutely. Everything that um, everything that I'm saying, of course, is is purely just educational standpoint. But without that, uh, you know, that concept of a stop loss, that was something that we really do need to talk about. So we see that there is a stop loss on this particular trade, and you're saying, well, where do I put that stop loss, right? So as a trader, as a, as a breakout trader, remember how we talked about this level here, right? We talked about this level of resistance as our barrier for when price is going to continue or we're going to try and see it continue, right? And if we see this market continue, then that's great. But if it does not go against us or if it does go against us, the reason I put the stop loss right around here is because of this level of resistance. If we see that resistance no longer, or, or we see sellers step in and push that off of that resistance level, we don't want to be involved with the trade anymore. Does that make sense? Yeah. So I've put so the... about uh, about uh, how many uh, pips do we do we we use? So to it's normally allowed for. Oh, right. So it's going to kind of depend because the thing is, we're looking at a fifteen-minute chart, right? And so the pip count is going to be different depending on the time frame that you're using. And it's going to depend on the actual way the candlestick patterns are, right? So if we have, for example, here, right? Uh, and let's say that we see a candlestick close right here. So we have our level of resistance and the next bar breaks out and closes here. Well, we want to get involved here, likely, based on this concept, right? So if price continues from there, we don't want to make our stop loss huge, right? We don't want to put a massive stop loss because, you know, the market, here's our entry, here's our stop loss. That's a very big distance, right? So it's going to depend kind of on the actual setup itself. So let's say that we do kind of take a look at this concept here. We put the stop loss here, which uh, I guess I could calculate the pips in a second. I'd have to back out of my sketch pad, but I'll do it in just a second. The pip count is not as important as reading the structure of the chart. Does that make sense? Oh yeah, okay, I get it. Yeah, yeah, so the, the pip count is not quite as important as understanding, hey, this is where sellers, we're, they were strong and now buyers are strong. If that level gets broken, then buyers are not strong enough and we want to get out of the trade based on this particular technical trade setup. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Perfect. Okay, cool. So with that said, kind of wrapping up on the stop loss concept, we want to put it under some sort of significant level. Now, it's going to be different on each trade setup. It's not going to be a perfect, easy answer. Right. One of the things about trading is it does require a little bit of creativity with your trades. Not everything is going to be perfect science. Uh, do you understand what I mean by that? Yes, I do. Right. So we want to read the story of the chart. So when we're looking at this story, we see buyers in strong momentum. They pushed price up. They halted for a minute and they broke through and continued up. We want to read that story. And so if that story starts to change directions, let's just get out of the trade. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Okay, awesome. So that is 
probably a good start on that concept there. Um, do you have any other questions with what we're looking at here? No question. Okay, great. Uh, so yeah, um, again, looking at GBP New Zealand on the 15 minute chart, we're looking at the lower time frames here. And things are going to be a little bit different on different time frames. Um, just curious as we go forward, do you have a preferred time frame that you like to trade? I have uh, I have read uh, some um, uh, traders online, and it suggested that uh, it's always uh, better to start from uh, from the daily from the daily time frame to the four hours to the one hour, and then to fifteen. Gotcha. And so, so the thing that I would say is that when you're looking at the markets, you know, there, there are people everywhere with different opinions, but I think that it's really, really important when we're talking about you and your trading strategy to make sure that you're the most comfortable that you can be on that particular time frame. So do you like to trade like longer term? Do you like to look at the markets uh, very, very quickly? Do you want to be in and out of trades? Do you want to be longer term? Like what kind of, what is the most ideal or comfortable? Do you have a busy schedule? That sort of thing. What is best fit for you? I have time. I have time to trade. Okay. So, so that will be poor is what uh, I want to go with. I, I can trade 15. I can go in and out and I can, I can trade for longer hours. I have have time okay well that's that's good to know so if you do have time and you like the kind of faster paced markets the 15 minute the 30 minute and the one hour chart might be a good fit for you so with that said um, if you like the intraday if you like the short term time frames um, you said you're in 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 the west coast right yes i'm in california so you're in the west coast. los angeles yeah and so yes los angeles Oh, awesome. Okay. So, so that kind of gives you uh, a decent time frame to trade something like uh, maybe the Asian session as well as the New York session. Does that make sense? Time is the Asian section. That, that's in the evening, right? Yeah, it's about uh, 6 p.m., 7 p.m. Eastern. So maybe 3 p.m., uh, 4 p.m. your time. Yes, I can do that. Yeah. So then that could give you. Now, now the reason I say that is because remember, as a breakout trader, if you're gonna look for that continuation in markets, we wanna be at the chart when markets are moving. Does that make sense? We talked about the fact that as a breakout trader, as a continuation trader, we wanna see markets trending, making big moves to the up or down side. Now, if you're trading uh, kind of during a quiet time, look at what's happening right here. Do you see how quiet the market is? It is. It is quiet. Very quiet. And there's nothing for us to breakout trade. So if we're trying to be a breakout trader, if we're seeing for continuation to happen, we want to see the market moving. Take a look right here. We see movement here. And we see movement here. And chances are these bigger movements, right, they're going to be happening during major sessions. Does that make sense? It does. So this might be, I, I have no idea what time exactly this is. Let's say that this is, uh, this is the, let's say the London session or something. Uh, you might be able to trade the London session if you stay up late, but you might not want to do that. Um, I think it's around midnight is the London session. And the reason I say that is the London session, in case you don't know it, you mentioned that you had seen my London breakout strategy video. Uh, yes. That is the most busy time in Forex, because that's when the most volume comes. I don't know if you're familiar with that or not, but mm -hmm. if you have an I interest, have that. that's one opportunity. Um, the other major one is the New York session, as well as the London session. So when we're looking at the markets from a 15 minute time frame, look at how quiet the market is right here. See how mm -hmm. dead that is? See how quiet, no, no movement, right? Yeah. How are we going to break out trade that? It would be very, very tough, right? Yes. So we want to wait and see. Well, now we have markets moving. Now we could look for some continuation, some breakouts on this particular, uh, this chart. You can see this was just news. So we probably want to avoid that, right? Or 
if you were to break out trade this, which would be tough, I probably wouldn't take this setup because it's not very clean. You can see how kind of ugly that wick is there. Wow, that's a good letter. Yeah, yeah. So, so you can see, you know, from a perspective of trading this, that would be tough because you didn't get the continuation. Remember we talked about that? There's our level of resistance, but we didn't see that market continue. Do you see that? Yes. So nothing there for us to trade, but take a look right here. Okay, look at this right here. We'll zoom in a little bit. Do you see, cool. do you see this structure right here? Mm -hmm. Here's an example of a short side example of what we've been talking about. See how the market's in momentum to the downside now? Uh. Take a look at how this market continued. So what we'll do is we'll just, uh, let's see. So we had a market making a movement to the downside, right? Strong momentum coming into this market. Mm. And we put in a low right here. Do you see how markets bounced off of that low? Uh. That gives us our level of support. And when we see that market break, I know I'm not very zoomed in. It's because of this, this candle is messing me up. But when we saw this market break and close beneath right here, do you see how that market continued lower after that? Yeah. So a beautiful little entry would have been to get involved right around here and to ride that push to the downside with a potential stop loss just over the recent highs. Does that make sense? Yes, it makes. Awesome. So we're looking for that continuation of this market. We're looking to kind of finish out strong and we want to see the continuation of a market as opposed to just trying to, uh, you know, we, we want to see that market continue or we're not interested in the trade. I think that that concept is very, very important and gives us kind of a concept of, of how we're going to manage our risk on our trades. Do you get that? Yes. Okay, awesome. Um, so... With that said, from a technical perspective, that gives us a good start. Now, there are also other types of breakouts that we can talk about, like other styles of breakouts. For example, do you see this trend line that we have? Yes. Look at what happened right here. So you can see we have, I can't. Oh, okay, now I see. Okay. Now that 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 trend line you drew. Mm -hmm. What are the two points you con? I don't see the connections of the the trend lines. Oh yeah. Do you see right here? Okay, that. Oh, okay. And then we saw a bounce there and a bounce okay. there. Okay. And one right here, right? So maybe in the in our next session, we can go a little bit more detailed in this concept, but just to get us started, right? Here is our trend line trade, right? A, a very simple trend uh, continuation. This is a pullback, right? These are the concepts of pullbacks. We have markets moving, pulling back, move, markets moving, pulling back. But look at this. Do you see how we broke structure here? Yep. This is a breakout style by itself. Now, mm. what do you see? What do you see is you see a, just like last time we talked about broken structure. That's the basics of understanding breakouts. When we have broken structure mm. like this, that's where breakout trading can be effective. Does that make sense? It does. So even though we're not trading in the overall, you know, we're, we're not trading with this market direction. When the markets break structure, a lot of times we start see the start of a new trend. Right, so as breakout traders, it doesn't necessarily mean that we have to trade with this direction. We can trade the start of a new trend. Does that make sense? So when price broke through right here, same concept. Price breaks through and closes underneath a significant level and we see an entry and we see price shoot to the downside do you see that yeah so so that 
would, would that, that would be a good time to exit the trade, right? If we that's an idea if, if we are you were, buying from the bottom yes yes so that's one idea for sure if you were buying back here and you were buying here and you were buying here then a close underneath a significant close underneath like maybe this one or this one could be a good way to close out your position right your buy position if you were buying this market you could close out right around here does that make sense mm. and in fact when you do close out you could even open a new position to the short side if it meets your trading criteria. Does that make sense? Yes. Now we've ridden the market on the way up and we can ride the market on the way down. Hopefully that makes sense there um, on this particular concept. We'll go into more detail, I think, on our next session, if you'd like to, about uh, kind of trend line breakouts, if that's something you're interested. In. And then we can also work on actually writing up a trading plan, which I think is super important. So do you have any kind of questions here wrapping up on this particular session? Uh, no, I think, uh, I think I got it. Awesome. Awesome. Um, well, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to quickly kind of finish out our recording. And we will see you on the...